Hey guys, so I'm um, creating a part two to the Ethereum video because I felt like there were some things that were left out of the video and I don't want to screw you all over if you need to take a quiz on it or something. Um, what we're going to cover in this episode, I guess episode, that's kind of a weird term for it. Um, this lesson is um, logarithms and their uh, interactions with the theorem, um, the inverse e theorem, and a couple other use cases that you might find yourself in. And then uh, at some point I'll also answer a question that came up in response to the last video. Um, yep, so let's get into it. Hey guys, so I'm actually going to answer the question that came up first. Um, Discord user Patback asked how you would do 8 to the second power. Um, so obviously this is our question, um, and we start by eating the 2 over, so we have 2 um, times 8, and then we also know that 8 is 6 plus 2, and because we're using the ADA theorem and because we'll eventually write QED down here, we can ignore the plus sign and just combine like terms, and that'll give us 64, um, and just to verify with the calculator in case anyone disagrees. Uh, I don't know if anyone will, but we can do 8 to the second, which will give us 64. So we know that to be true. Um, and yeah, just make sure you write QED. This is really important. And I should also mention there's another way to do this problem. Um, so obviously eat the 2. have 2 times 8. Um, and then we know that Oh, hold on. My brain is not working right. Yeah, we know that um, two. Oh, shit, yeah, two is and four plus four. Eight is four plus four, obviously. Um, and then oh yeah, and then we can ignore operators and just put the two and the four together to make. Four six and the four right there um, and that gives us 64 and we still we verified that last time so I'm not going to do it again um, yeah all right so the next thing I want to cover is using um, the theorem to work with logs um, this one's not that hard you might have seen it in your math class before so for any log problem we have log base whatever um, and like three to the power of seven um, you can eat the 7 over to the front using momentum, obviously. Um, and that allows us to quickly get rid of this operator. It makes it a little bit less complicated of a problem. And then you can go and, um, I forget what it's called, like do logarithmic addition and stuff, uh, derivatives, whatever you need to do. This works with literally any um, base. So if our base is like 127, and we had like 88, because 88 is a weird number, and then had like exponent of 2. We can eat the 2 over to the front, get rid of this. It just makes our problem a bit less complicated. Um, we can also do the inverse of this, and that'll bring me to the inverse eat theorem, which I'll explain more on the next slide, but it basically just allows us to take the 2 back and put it over here. Um, it's a pretty useful theory. I'll get more to it in a second. All right, so I don't have any sort of fancy proof for this one, but um, this is a use case for the inverse heat theorem. Um, obviously, the inverse heat theorem step is down here. Uh, he takes the one half in this problem and eats it up on as an exponent to the pi, which allows him to then uh, cancel the like terms here. At, or no. No, he doesn't cancel like terms, sorry. He just um, changes this into a radical and puts the two on the bottom. Uh, just easy stuff. Um, but inverse heat theorem can also be written as IYT, uh, standing for inverse heat theorem. And it's pretty powerful. It helps you do a lot of stuff if you get stuck in a hole um, in your problem. It can help you get out of that hole. Uh, I don't really 
care about what's happening up here. It's just, you can pause the video if you want to look at this proof. Um, this guy's got an exclamation point in his answer. I'm not sure why he's that mad at the math, but uh, it'd be like that. All right, so the next thing I thought I should introduce is the operator. Uh, so obviously we know that the theorem allows us to pull the exponent out, um, but we can also express this as um, n and then a circle with a y in it, uh, x. So any number n and x, we can uh, yeet the x to the front. Um, That doesn't seem right. Yeah, this guy wrote it wrong. This is right. Um, should be x e n, which says that n is the exponent. And we want to eat that over. Um, here's some examples of it. Five exponent two. We want to eat that over. That can also be expressed as two eat operator five, um, and that gives us 25. Um, what am I missing here? I didn't really read this. I just kind of looked at the pictures because that's how I do math. Uh, yeet equality. Ah, uh, yes, this is denoting that this is equal and we're yeeting. Uh, I don't really use this. I don't really think it's necessary. Um, you can if you want to. It, it really just comes down to what your teacher prefers or your professor, or your TA, or just whoever grades your papers, if it's your mom or something. Um, my mom does not grade my papers, but yeah. Uh, to the next topic. All right, so um, this is some upper level math example of the theorem. Uh, I'm not a mathematician. I just am familiar with the E theorem. Uh, but because it's upper level math, I don't really understand every single part of it. I just know that it's just the word eat down here and that piqued my interest. Um, so it looks like at some point the problem they got to this p of n equals p, uh, or sorry, p to the n, no, yeah, p to the n. Um, and they need a way to get that to say n p. So we obviously can just um, eat that over. It says QED, so we're good. Uh, make sure to check that. And we know that p to the n is. Uh, by the e equality equal to np, and that will switch our answer for us um, from this to that, and that helps complete this proof um, using these weird things. I don't really know what they are, but this just shows the e theorem is useful in upper level math. All right, so another example I wanted to explain with the e theorem is if you have a problem where you have like two exponents. Um, and so this might look kind of complicated. You might just like eat this one, then eat that one, but that's just not right. Uh, what you have to do is understand that um, this is uh, can also be written as two to the second in parentheses to the second, or um, two to the second second. And you have to understand that these two things are both valid. Uh, I don't know if that's the right equal sign, but we're going to roll with it. So because those are both valid things, when you have this problem, you have to yeet the top to the front and to the middle. And so that will give us 2 times 2, and then this will be to the power of 2 times 2. And then once you have that, you can yeet this whole thing over, and that will give you um, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 will give us 16 and just make sure you write QED um, and I can verify this if y'all want so we know that 2 to the second power is um, yeah it's 4 what the it's not the right button uh, my my thing won't write an equal sign we're just gonna put a 4 right there um, and then we know that 4 to the second power, uh, pretend that's a 2, is um, 4 to the second, yeah, it's 16. Um, 
and that's obviously equal so we know that the theorem worked in this instance. So if you're interested in studying um, computer science, for example, or maybe like data science or some weird math major, uh, you might be familiar with De Morgan's Law, which is used in discrete math in one of my classes. So we know that the E theorem can be used for this, and there's a lot of words here. You can read them if you want, but I'm not going to. Um, if you have a power outside of parentheses and you want to know how it applies to the things inside the parentheses uh, it'll go to both and we know that because when you eat that over uh, the parentheses have a large gravitational pull and that that yeet um, operation you just did will only get the exponent part of the way through it falls in the middle um, and it splits the uh, operator in the middle like this union into an anti-union um, and it also throws the exponent into to either side of this uh, what was a union um, and then the final answer would be a to the exponent anti-union b to the exponent and obviously they wrote qed because they're a good student um, and here's the little box again uh, but yeah, that's De Morgan's law and gravitational pull. So this is an example of the uh, inverse E theorem. Uh, this specific person doesn't necessarily refer to it um, properly. Um, sometimes math is hard and words are hard. Uh, but um, let's just get familiar with this problem first. Yeah, so he eats this term back over the one uh, or the negative one to get negative one negative e i pi um, and then just does some other stuff just make sure you write QED um, yeah inverse eat theorem is pretty useful here's another good um, proof example using the eat theorem that I found um, they do a bunch of stuff we're trying to prove that e to the i of I think that's theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta um, We've got QED down there, so we're good. We can use the Yeet theorem. Um, so, uh, actually, that's a phi. I don't really know what that is. I don't do upper level math. But they substitute what I thought was theta for phi um, with plain English, and they just rearrange the letters a little bit. Um, and then they can change a pi into the pi symbol in all these steps. Um, and then they pull the h's out uh, of the two cosine and uh, of the cosine and the sine, and then they can factor that. I believe I don't really know actual math, so um, I don't really know what this step is. But if someone knows, that would be helpful. Um, and then the Yeet theorem uses the h and the i here to eat that out. And then the E theorem here takes this negative out and this negative out. Um, and then they do some actual math again. So I don't really know what just happened there. He probably just does addition and subtraction. But what is that? Um, and then they flip the H over here and flip this fraction over. Um, just because you can do that. And then they use a different theorem that I'm not going to get into where you can substitute this H for a 4 because they look the same. And then because this 4 looks like a 4, you can just say it's a 4. Um, and then they multiply the 2's together. And we get 4IE pi equals 4IE pi. And so that's just another example of the E theorem. Um, yeah. All right. So that's about all I want to cover in the uh, Understanding E Theorem Part 2 video. Um, I'm just going to leave you all with a little bit of a practice problem. Um, so if we had like 6 uh, to the power of, um, let's say like like 3, um, I want you all to try to solve this. And if that's too easy, then do like 12 to the power of like 4. And... Um, so you can pause the video. I mean, this is the end of the video, so you don't really need to pause it. But 
um, try to solve it and then write your answer in the comments and compare with others and see if you got it right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll look through the comments and give some suggestions, but yeah, you should know everything you need to know. Just remember ye operator, uh, ye equivalents, um, inverse ye theorem, uh, which is basically just going the other way. Remember the log stuff. You can just use the log power over, and then just remember to use your your good intuition. I know all of you have it. We just we're just trying to pass math. Um, yeah. So uh, work on those two problems. Tell me what you come up with in the uh, comments. I'm excited to hear. Thank you. I almost forgot. Keep it sleazy, boys.